Nearer for the ark ran around after the great flood, had seen the monstrous Huawa, protector of cedar forest, and the scorpion men who guarded the roadway to the garden of the gods. One day, as Gilgamesh showed Enkidu the sights of the city, he pointed out the carved stone treasures, recording the deeds of Uruk's great men. Where are the deeds of Gilgamesh? Ask Enkidu. Here, cried Gilgamesh, spreading eagerly himself against the wall. This bank, so far, I've been doing done nothing worth carving in stone. But soon, soon, Enkidu. You and I and I are going to have are going on such an adventure that no wall will be large enough to record it. We are a k d to flatten himself against the wall, striking a green pose. Where, when, now? The very ends of his long hair crackled with energy. It was you who gave me the idea. Who's the most frightening foe in the whole world? Enki raises wings. Gilgamesh is. Ask his enemies. Gilgamesh laughs. Someone far more dangerous. We are fight. We are going to fight Huawa, guardians of the cedar forest, and kill him and bring him, bring home cedar wood to build a new gate for Uruk. Enkidu stepped away from the wall. Ah, now listen. You're forgetting. I've seen Huawa. He's a monster among monsters. The trees are along, alongside of him. His strength is the stuff of legends. He never sleeps. When a fox stamps its paws 60 leggings away, he will hear it. Huawa hears it. He'll live for battle. He was made for no other purpose than to guard the forest. No one goes there for fear of him. Besides, a kind of magic surrounds him. You can't go close with your strengths or ebbing away. If you had seen Huawa, I would have killed him already. We have to make our mark, don't we? What are you afraid of? Of getting killed, sir, and Kidu candidly. Gilgamesh spread his arms above his head as if reaching up to cut the hems of the gods. Then we will have died gloriously, won't we? And our names will be written in clouds of glory on the noonday sky. Fame is everything, and it keeps to, isn't it? Why live in not to mark, make a mark on the world, to blaze a share of it, to do these worthy of remembrance? Do or die, both of us is for a client, his feet sits ground onto life like a praise fighter. A surge of love throws through Enkidu. Do or die, he cried, and closed his own hand around the king's appraised fist. Just do me a favor. The cedar voice belongs to Shemish, the sun. Don't fly in the face of the gods. Tell Shemish what you want to do. Ask his blessing. This is how Kijimish can be standing at high room in the full glare of the sun. A white kid at his feet and a white and the silver of their which speak in the sunbeams of he spoke. O son, O Lord and Master, who sees all. Only help me do this thing, and I shall build you a temple all so the world. Would you would would from your own force. O son, your who are you wild in fury splendor? Truly you understand a man's need to clothe himself in glory. Swaying as he prayed, Gilgamesh felt the tear, tears on his cheeks dried to streaks on the white salt. Then was that with a red hot hand rested on the crown of his head. Shemesh had given his blessing. Throngs of people, unlocked, have gathered round, I fearful, wondering at the people of Aura, cried Gilgamesh. I go to the forest of cedar, cedar, um, to cut cedar for the new city gates and the temple to the god Shaman. There I shall do battle with Huawa, the evil one. Pray for me I should, and make offerings to the sun. I shall bring back such glory to Uruk that in the name of Uruk will live forever in the annals of the world. The crowd gave a nervous laugh and burst out singing a clumsy shuffling dance, carried them to their home and, and their houses. Gilgamesh and Indigo went to the forges and gave orders for two axes and two spawns. Armourers and craftsmen went out 
into the ancient groves and cut willow and box wood for axe handles and spear and spear shafts. But they was they sent Ashen to Persia for wood, fine enough to make a king's bow. The axe of Gilgamesh was called Might of Heroes, his bow, Ashen, every stage of crossing swapped over Gilgamesh and in for they knew as their lives would depend on these weapons. As the gulf as the gulf those sparks flew up from the anvil and all the councillors of Uruk gathered their doorways of the forge. The old heads were white with the snow of wisdom. You were a young Gilgamesh, youth is rash. We beg you to reconsider this Huawa. Is a thing of spirit, magic, invincible. But Gilgamesh only laughed. What do you want me to do, gentlemen? Sit at home for three score years, wrap up warm in winter and keep cool in the summer, and stay safe here in Earth? The blacksmith passed and finished to sort out his hands. It weighed as much as a grown man, but he handled it delicately as a newborn baby. The counselor took their wise old heads. There is no telling young people anything that they do not want to hear. They comforted themselves on the way home, saying, "If any, just keep on eating. If anyone can do this thing, it is Gilgamesh and his friends, the wild man. Ninsa, the king's mother, sent for Enkidu. Remember to dig a well every evening, Enkidu, and offer up pure water to the sun." God every day. I will look after him, Enkidu. You are not my son. I, I did not give birth to you, but bring Gilgamesh stay home, and I shall adopt you as my son. Own. I am relying on you, Enkidu. <coughs> the wild man bowed his head. For the first time, he realized that there was someone else in the, this world to love Gilgamesh as much as he did. What a way it was to the land of Sedar Fars. Even though the friends walked 50 leagues a day and accomplished in three days um, what what it would take other six weeks to do, they still had seven mountains to cross before um, they stood at the forest gate. Carved in a dozen languages were warnings and prohibitions. Do not enter. Cut no trees on the pain of death. This forest is protected by Huawa, terror of the earth. And yet the woodlands beyond the gate were as greenly peaceful as the bottom of the lake. Bird song rippled outwards from its trickling wavelets. Enkidu sh shoved open the gate. His knees sagged. His head spun. His hands prickled as though stabbed by a thousand splinters. He 